Hey guys, so I'm going to show you the basic philosophy behind DJing in Ableton. And if you're a traditional DJ who uses CDs or uh, turntables, I'm going to show you a setup using a similar system. So basically consider each one of these tracks, each one of these audio tracks, as a separate turntable or a separate CD player. I can add as many as I like and I could actually, you know, play many more than, uh, than just two. But in this case, I'm going to just use two just to, to kind of show you the basics of DJing. So what I've got here, each of these clips represent a different song. And then I have my song library over here. And this is just basically a browser. And I found my window that has my songs. What you would do is you would, you know, drag your song in that you want to play into here. And that's how you would load a track into Ableton to play. Now, you're going to want to make sure that your song is warped. So if you haven't learned how to do that, you might want to check out another video in order to, to learn that aspect and then come back to, to this. The way this works is that you've got your songs going out the master output. So one important thing that, that you're going to need to know, and this is the same if you're, uh, if you're using traditional turntables or whatever, is you need uh, multiple outputs. You need, like if you're DJing with a traditional mixer, you need uh, one of your turntables, let's say, going into input one on your DJ mixer and turntable two going into three and four on your mixer. Ableton works a little bit differently if you're, if you're going strictly inside. And I'll, I'll, I'll discuss later the setup for a, a DJ mixer. But the way that Ableton works is all your songs are going to go out the same master output, okay? And then you're going to have a separate output for your queuing. So let me just set this differently so I can give you an idea. Now, traditionally, you're going to want at least four outputs on your sound card. So your computer's internal sound card is not going to work for DJing. You're going to need to get another sound card that has the option of four outputs. But in this case, what I'm going to do because I, I couldn't really make a video with a four output sound card, is I'm going to show you by setting the cue to the right and the master output to the left speaker. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the audios are, are both to master. So that's set up. So now if I play a song, that's what would go out to your audience if you were playing, or that's what would come through your speakers. Okay? And if you're cueing, and let me just come down here, see where this volume is, and you see the headphones here. You click on this where it says solo, and now it's going to say cue. So now, as you'll see, the, these icons change to headphones. So if I click on the headphone, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this volume down so you're not hearing anything out of the left speaker and you're only hearing what would normally be in your headphones that you're cueing. So when I play this, you're going to hear this on the right side. Okay. So in a traditional situation, I could have this song playing, right? Okay. So I've got this song and this song is, you know, is playing to your audience, let's say. And now you want to listen to the next track and know how to mix it in. So you would simply play this track and you could use the volume over here to set how loud you need the, the cue to be. And then when you want to mix that song in, you'll notice it coming in onto the left speaker. And then I could turn the cue off now you've got both songs playing at the same time. And then if you wanted to, you can mix the other song out. And now you've made a transition. So that's, that's essentially how uh, DJing in Ableton works. Now the other approach that you can take is like the traditional DJ likes to crossfade songs. And Ableton has that ability as well. So if you come down here, follow my mouse, we've got our crossfader right down here. Okay. And the way that, that that's going to work is you have an A side and a B side. 
And if you have several tracks, you can set as many tracks as you want to the A side and as many tracks as you want to the B side. And the A side is going to be when the crossfader is on the left, and the B side is going to be when it's on the right. If I wanted to do traditional mixing with a crossfader, I would just go ahead and leave both of my volumes up, full volume. And so let's say both these tracks are playing. And I've got the crossfader set all the way to the left, so only this track is being heard. But as I move it over to the right, you'll hear it start to fade the next track in. Now they're both playing at equal volume. And the new song has taken over. So that is how a crossfader works. In the next video, we'll go a little bit deeper.